Then the topic which has been allotted at this time and that has been given to me is recent controversies regarding the Prophet Muhammad. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And this talk was originally formulated and put together some years ago when the controversies regarding the Danish cartoons that had been printed in some of the newspapers and then reprinted in the year 2006. And the reason they were reprinted was because the response from the Muslims at that time when they were first printed was not uh, sufficient. So at that time there was no uh, there was no riots and there was nothing like this. So the newspapers took it upon themselves to once again reprint them. So when the atmosphere was a little bit more suitable to riots and it was a little bit more suitable to violence. And we'll get to that point uh, shortly as to what should be the response when things like this, when mockery is made of not only the last and final messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but mockery is made of any prophet. Because as Muslims, we are from those la nufarriku bayna ahadim min rasul. As Allah He says in Surah Ali Imran, we are from those that do not differentiate between any of the prophets, from Adam all the way to the last of them, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We respect each and every one of them. We love each and every one of them, and we follow each and every one of them. So the talk was formulated at that time when we had uh, some different renowned authorities in their own field speaking ill of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at that time. Uh, from amongst them was the Pope of the Catholic Church, Pope Benedict XVI, where he allotted that quoting one of the, I believe it was the 13th or 14th century Byzantine emperor uh, claiming that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not bring forth anything new except that it was evil in its nature. And then you had some other uh, speakers who also threw some allegations at the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such as Aryan Ali, Aryan Ali, who was a Danish politician, originally Somalian, who had uh, apostated from the religion of Islam and has now made it the core of her career to speak out against the religion of Islam. Also, there was Irshad Manji, who was a Canadian, uh, previously Muslim from Canada, who also began to speak out against the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now the talk which has been allotted to me in defense of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that indeed it can be worded in many different ways. Because the defense comes as a defense of the religion of Islam since the refutation of many of these people was against the religion of Islam and not necessarily upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his personal character. But rather it was allegations against that which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought. Or it can be considered a defense of the sharia of al-Islam, again that which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought. But before we get into this topic, each and everything that we saw from the allegations that were put forth, against the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it seemed like there was a general understanding which was lacking. And this general understanding is specifically lacking in the West. Because in the West, there is a tendency not to judge anything objectively, but to judge everything subjectively. And at the whole time, judging things subjectively, thinking that we are judging them objectively. The reason being this. In the West, there is a clear and definite separation between state and church. So, where certain acts 
are claimed that the religion does not do these acts. So the religion of Christianity or the religion of Judaism or the religion of Hinduism or Sikhism or any religion which is present upon the face of the earth, these religions do not do it. The same acts are found on the state level, on the political level, but are then not attributed to the religion because it is not the religion doing it, because the religion has been removed from the political atmosphere. It has been separated from the political atmosphere, or from the educational atmosphere, or from the military atmosphere. The religion has been removed from those things. Hence the religion has been made something which is particular to the self, to that which is private. And in Islam, there is no thought on this level. There is no thought on this level. Because in Islam, the rulings of this religion encompass all things. Where it encompasses our dealings in our personal lives, whether it is with our families, or it is with, between husband and wife, or it is between uh, 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 parent and child, or it is between the ruler and the ruled. The rulings of Islam, they encompass our entire life. So it cannot be removed from any sphere of our existence. It cannot be removed from our political life. It cannot be removed from our family life, from our educational life. It cannot be removed from our jobs. It cannot be removed from the political or the military atmosphere of any Muslim country. And we're speaking from the level of Islam itself. Islam does not allow this. Hence, the religion of Islam allows certain things within the religion where other people, where other religions remove it from the religion but they still apply it to their political state. So the act is done, but it is not done under the name of, say, Christianity, but it is done under the name of the government of the United States of America, or under the government of the United Kingdom, or under the government of Canada, or under the government of the European Union. So there is a level of injustice. Because you are weighing two different things. You cannot weigh the application of Christianity in Western civilization to the application of Islam in our society. Because it is not applied in the same manner. But rather you must judge your political applications to Islamic applications, your military applications, to that thing which comes in Islam, your personal life to that which comes in Islam, your religious life to that which comes in Islam, you must encompass a larger portion of Western civilization, and you cannot just judge religion in Western civilization to Islam. Whether we are speaking about the rulings of apostasy because Islam and again we are speaking strictly on the terms of a Islamic government a government which is ruled by the rulings of Islam by the Sharia of Al Islam we are speaking about those so do not confuse Muslim government and Islamic government Muslim government or Muslim governance is one thing, and Islamic governance is another. So whether we are speaking about the rules of apostasy in Islam, that in an Islamic government, the ruling the religion of Islam brings upon apostasy is the death penalty. Or we are speaking about the taking of taxes from non-Muslim citizens or we are speaking about the death penalty 
on numerous different levels. Or we are speaking about the status of men and the status of women. Regardless of what we are speaking about, you must see that in Western civilization, where are these things being applied? Before you judge religion and religion. 